بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیو ٹو دا ریکویسٹ آف سم آف آور آڈینس وی آر گوئنگ ٹو گو تھرو دی تفسیر آف سورت یاسین ان شاء اللہ عزیز می بی دس ول ٹیک ایٹ لیسٹ ایٹ ٹو ٹین دس کورسز می بی لیس ویل ٹرائی بٹ ان شاء اللہ ویل ٹرائی اینڈ ڈو دا تفسیر ان ڈیٹیل ان شاء اللہ سورت یاسین فرسٹ آف آل اے بریف سمری آف سورت یاسین دس سورت واز ریویلڈ ان مکہ مکرمہ اپون رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سم ٹائم بفور سورت الجن ایز دا مفسدین ہب سے It has 83 verses and according to Tafsir Khazin, 3,000 letters. Which means when a person recites one letter, he gets 10 hasanat recorded in his book of good deeds by the angel. When we say Alif, Lam, Meem, we get 30 hasanat. We say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, 19 letters, we get 190 hasanat. So when we recite Yasin Sharif, which will take us five minutes, we will get 30,000 hasanat. So Surah Yasin is a very virtuous surah. It is quite easy to memorize. We should try and memorize it. A hadith in musnad e bazaar narrated on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma says, لَوَلِدْتُ أَنَّهَا فِي قَلْبِ كُلِّ إِنسَانٍ مِنْ أُمَّتِهِ It is my ardent wish that Surah Al-Yaseen should be in the heart of every believer among my Ummah. So those among the audience who don't know Surah Al-Yaseen should try and memorize Surah Al-Yaseen. Ayat by ayat, slowly, slowly, but surely, inshallah, you will get there. Try and memorize it. It will be extremely beneficial for you. Then you can recite it in Salah as well. You can recite it without touching the Quran as well. And you can recite it even without Wudu as well. You are just sitting, you are lying down, trying to sleep. You can't sleep. You start reading Surah Yasin. Inshallah, you will sleep as well. So, Surah Yasin was revealed to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Makkah Mukarramah and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said with regards to the virtues of Surat Yaseen إِنَّ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَلْبًا وَقَلْبُ الْقُرْآنِ يَاسِينَ وَمَنْ قَرَأَ يَاسِينَ كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِقِرَاءَتِهَا قِرَاءَةَ الْقُرْآنِ عَشْرَ مَرَّاتِ Everything has a heart and the heart of Quran is Yaseen and whosoever recites Yaseen Allah will note down for him the sawab of reading the Qur'an ten times over. What does Qalbul Qur'an mean? Hazrat Mawlana Sufi Abdul Hamid Suwati Rahmatullahi Alayhi explains in Mu'ariful Qur'an that with regards to Surah Al-Baqarah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَنَامٌ وَسَنَامُ الْقُرْآنِ Suratu Al-Baqarah Everything has a high position like the hump of a camel and the, this high position held in the Quran is by Surah Al-Baqarah meaning it is the lengthiest Surah, it is the highest Surah and it has the most ahkam and instructions and commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with regards to Surah Yaseen, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it's the heart of the Quran if the heart is beating the human is alive But if the beating stops, the person dies. So the whole body rests on the heart. Similarly, the condition of heart is utmost important because in it is Iman, belief, or Kufr, disbelief. In it is good characters, manners, or bad manners. Hasad, booze, inad, jealousy, envy are all related to the heart. And similarly, generosity, humbleness, humility, 
and all these good characters are also related to the heart. So if the heart is sound, then the uh, hum, a mu'min's whole life will be on track on sirat mustaqim But if the heart is corrupted, then his whole life will be out of uh, order. So the heart is the most important factor physically as well and spiritually as well. If the heart beats mm -hmm. stops, a person dies. Similarly, if the heart is corrupted, then the whole human being is corrupted. And that is why the Prophet وسلم, said, Ala wa inna fil jasadi mudghatan ila salahat, salah al jasadu kullu. Wa ila fasadat, fasad al jasadu kullu, ala wa hi al qalb. There is a piece of flesh in the body. If it's good, the whole body is good. If it's corrupt, the whole body is corrupt. That is the heart. So we need to keep our heart clean, pure. This is why. In Surat Ash-Shu'ara, we recited Illa man atallaha bi qalbin salim. So this qalbi salim, having a qalb which is salim, is the most important uh, thing in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So over here as well, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Surat Yasin is qalbul Qur'an. You learn it and uh, understand it and uh, it will make your heart correct because the whole deen is based on aqaid a'mal will be accepted by Allah if aqidah is correct if aqidah is wrong then a'mal will not be accepted don't, we don't talk about the disbelievers among the believers as well Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the khawarij, the kharjits. And he said that they will pray lengthy salah, they will pray lots of Qur'an, they will keep lots of fasts, but they will enter Islam from one door and exit from the other door. Why is this? Because their aqidahs will be wrong. So aqidah is most important. If aqidah is correct, then little bit of a'mal will benefit. But if aqidah is wrong, then lots of a'mal will be useless. So aqidah is the main and in Aqaid, three points are made. Tawheed, believing in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, monotheism, Risalat, believing in the messengership of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he is a unique person, Rasulullah, and Akhirat, believing in life after death. These are the three main core of all the other Aqaid and all the other beliefs. They all revolve around these three. And these three are discussed in Surah Yaseen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off with the haqqaniyat of Qur'an. That this Qur'an is wise and it is full of wisdom and it is powerful and it is being narrated. Uh, uh, it has been revealed to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is mighty, powerful, who is merciful. And I am taking an oath by this Qur'an that you are my messenger. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is proving his mess the messengership of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After mentioning this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a little bit of consolation and tasalli to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you are fulfilling your duty, you are doing your job, keep doing it. And but don't, uh, you know, uh, grieve too much at the denial of those who are denying. Uh, you, it seems that you are going to kill yourself by grieving so much and worrying so much. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consoles Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a story of some messengers who were sent to a particular town and uh, they did their hard work. However, they were rejected and uh, uh, finally someone who came to support them was murdered by that community and uh, then Allah's azab came upon them and the city was annihilated. Allah says that when my messengers are rejected, then uh, my anger comes and then my wrath falls upon the deniers and rejecters. And this is what happens. After that, this covers two rukus, covered this message. And then from Wa'ayatullahum al Ardul Mayta, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his power. Allah has power over everything. And Allah created this, 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 sun, moon, night, day, everything. 
Allah created the ships for you to take your load from one place to the other. Mm. So if Allah can do this, believe in Him, believe in the oneness of Allah, in the power of Allah, and also at the same time believe in life after death. Then Allah discusses from one of the Qafis Sur, فَإِذَاهُمْ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاسِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَنْسِلُونَ Till the end of Surah, Allah discusses the subject matter of life after death. So this is how the Surah uh, progresses. Allah mentions the condition of the people of Jannah. إِنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ الْيَوْمُ فِي شُغُلٍ فَاكِهُونَ And then Allah mentions the condition of Jahannamis. وَمْتَازُ الْيَوْمُ أَيُّهَا الْمُجْرِمُونَ and then Allah mentions uh, the answer to the objection of those who said there is no life after death. And then Allah finishes the surah upon إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَقُولُ فَسُبْحَانَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ فَيَقُوتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَإِلَيْهِ تُقْلِعُونَ And this is how the surah comes to a close. Allah only has to say be and nothing because Allah is dark and pure and hallowed from what the objections and the questions that people put forward and they should not question the power and the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how the surah comes to a close. So this is the summary, brief summary of Surah Tash. Naksha bidara jayin? Ejara jayin? Ejara jayin? Pichya chya nahi. Aram si bethi rafa. Brief summary of Surah Tash. Naksha bidara. Naksha bidara. Aaj humne Surah Tash ki dafti shuru ki hai. Thoda se fazail Surah Tash ke bayan kar lete hain. The first fazilat we mentioned was inna li kulli shayin qalban wa qalbul qur'an surat yaseen Now we understand why surat yaseen is called qalbul qur'an the heart of the qur'an because heart of the subject matter is discussed in here aqa'il and tawheed risalat and akhirat is debated in this surat that's why it's called qalbul qur'an Moving on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if you recite surat yaseen once you get the thawab of reciting the Qur'an ten times. Meaning ten times without Surah Yaseen. Take away Surah Yaseen and rest of the Qur'an you read ten times. You get that much thawab. That much thawab, thawab is from, reward is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Immense reward is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Immeasurable. We can't count. It's beyond our count and estimate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is generous and He gives and He gives and He gives. He has no limits. And his khazana and his treasures have no limits. So that is why Allah said, you read Surah Yaseen with utmost concentration, humility, humbleness, ikhlas, sincerity, honesty, and I will reward you for reciting Quran ten times. Also, the Surah Pak sallallahu alayhi wa said in the virtues of Surah Yaseen, narrated by Ibn Hibban in his Sahih from Jundub ibn Abdullah al-Bajari radiyallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, من قرأ ياسين في ليلة ابتغاء وجه الله غفر له. Whosoever recites Yasin at night, seeking the pleasure of Allah, his sins will be forgiven. So this maghfirat, basharat is given upon reading Surah Yasin in the evening. Darami narrates from Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه who said, من قرأ ياسين حين يصبح أعطي يسر يومه حتى يمسي. ومن قرأها في صدر ليلته أعطي يسر ليلته حتى يصبح. Whosoever reads Yasin in the morning will be given easiness throughout the day till the evening. And whosoever reads Yasin in the beginning of the night will be given easiness throughout the night until morning takes place. So if you keep reading Surah Yasin morning and evening, Allah will make your life easy for you. Today we are struggling, we are failing to make ends meet. Everyone is complaining about recession, problems and this and that, personal problems, uh, household problems. Read Surah Yaseen, Allah will make your life easy for you. This is what this hadith is saying over here. In another riwayat, Ata ibn Abi Rabah says that Balaghani anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal Man qara'a Yaseen fi sadri nahar qudiyat hawaijuhu Whosoever recites Surah Yaseen in the beginning of the day, his needs will be fulfilled. Allah will take care of him. He will fulfill his needs. Someone asked a question on our website 
Molana Sap, I keep failing my driving test. Can you give me some wazifa taweez or something? And I said, before you go for your driving test, read Surah Salatul Hajar on read Surah Yasin and then go, Inshallah Allah will make your test easy for you. Because when you read Surah Yasin, Allah makes things easy. Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla says, Man qara'aha naharan kufiya hammahu, wa man qara'aha laylan ghufira zambahu. Whosoever recites Yasin in the day, his worries and anxieties will be removed. And whosoever reads it by night, his sins will be forgiven. Yahya ibn Abi Kasir says, Palaghani anna man qara'a Yasin laylan, lam yazal fi farahin hatta yusbiha. ومن قرأها حين يصبح لم يزل في فرح حتى يمسي وقد حدثني من جربها. I have received this uh, uh, good news that whosoever reads Yasin by night he will remain in happiness and a joyous mood till morning and whosoever reads it in the evening Allah will keep him in ease and happiness until the evening and I heard this from those who themselves experienced it. This is not a hadith. This is the saying of Yahya ibn Kathir, who is Yahya ibn Abi Kathir, who is a tabi'i, and he is saying from his own experience, I experienced this. Imam Qurtubi rahmatullah alayhi narrates from Imam Abu Ja'far Muhammad al-Baqir that he said, Man wajada fi qalbihi qasabatan fal yaktub yaseen fi jamin bi za'faranin thumma li yashrabhu. Whosoever feels qasabat and hard-heartedness, his heart becomes hard like a rock and there's no tears coming to him. He doesn't get that feel that softness and gentleness in him and he can't cry and he, he can't feel anything for anyone. He's become hard. Then he should write Surat Yasin in a, a, a jam which means a, 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 a kachki plate, glass plate with zafran, meaning put some zafran, saffron in a little bit of water, get a pen or maybe wooden pen and with that write Surat Yaseen and mm -hmm. after rewriting this whole Surat Yaseen, drink that water and inshallah the heart will become soft and that qasawat will go away. This is from Imam Abu Ja'far Muhammad Al-Baqir narrated by Imam Qurtubi Rahmatullah Yari. Imam Qurtubi also narrates from Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man dakhala al-maqabir, faqara'a surat yaseen, khaffafa allahu anhum yawma idhin, wa kana lahu bi'adadi man fiha hasanatin. Whosoever visits the graveyard and recites surat yaseen, Allah will lighten the burden upon those who are buried in that graveyard. And he will get hasanat and good deeds equivalent to all those who are buried in that graveyard. He will get that many hasanat equivalent to those who are buried over there. If you go to the Qabristan and read Surat Yaseen, if you can go every day and read Surat Yaseen, mashallah, not every day, once a week, once a month, whenever you get time, you should go to the Qabristan and read Surat Yaseen and give the sawab to the deceased over there. This is narrated in this hadith by Imam Qurtubi, rahmatullahi alayhi. Imam Abu Dawood and Musnadi Ahmad narrate from Ma'qil ibn Yassar radiyallahu anhu that Rasul Paak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Iqra'uha ala mawtakum Read Surah Yaseen upon your deceased ones. Now mawtakum here can have one of two interpretations. One is mawtakum means al-muhtazar man qarab al-mawt a person who, who is very near the death, who is about to die. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is saying, read on him. He is dead now. He is very nearly there. His soul is being taken out. So read Surah Yaseen. And for this reason, it has been the habit of our Aslaf that when a person's soul is being extracted, those around him start reading Surah Yaseen. And due to the barakat of Surah Yaseen, Allah makes the extracting of soul easy upon that person. It's not that you read Surah Yasin now and the root tear is taken away immediately. No, it might be taken after two days, three days, four days, five days, a week or so. But the extracting of the soul will be made easy upon that person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make his death easy. Just a few days back, my friend Musa Hafiji's father, 
Hafiz Ibrahim passed away in Canada. So while he was in hospital, I was constantly with him on the phone every day. And I used to, you know, inquire about his condition. So on um, Monday, uh, uh, on Friday, I, I told him, he, he phoned me and he was in a very distressed state. He said, my father is in his sakara. So I said, you know, start reading Surah Yasin. Or if you are busy with him, then tell someone who is half is over there to read Surah Yasin 41 times. One person should read 41 times. Not 40 people read it 40 times. No, one person. That is more effective. So if a one, one person read 41 times, and inshallah, Allah will make Sakrat easy for him. And they recited. But Havis Sahab still remain alive for two or two and a half days, and he passed away on Monday. But his uh, passing away was extremely easy. He passed away while saying Kalima La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Allah, 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 Allah was on his lips until he breathed his last. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this death easy for that person upon whom or in front of whom Surah Yasin is being recited. So this is also another benefit of memorizing Surah Yasin, which we mentioned before. That if someone memorizes Yasin, that at the time of need, he won't have to go to do wuzu and look for Quran and then read. He knows it by heart, he'll start reading immediately. And uh, uh, this is why the Prophet ﷺ said, read it upon those who are approaching their death. And number two, the literal meaning of Mautakum is upon those who have already died. This is the second meaning. That read Surat Yasin upon those who are dead, who have, who have passed away, who have died. So in the, this hadith will be the same as the one which we uh, uh, recited earlier from Qurtubi and Anas radiallahu anhu. That when you go to a graveyard, read Surat Yasin upon those who are dead and who are buried over there. This is another proof that reading Surah Yasin and giving the thawab to those who have passed away is allowed. There is no harm in there. And there are many other uh, narrations with regards to this as well. Hazrat Sheikh Yunus Sahib Damat Barakatuhum in his book al yawaqitul Ghaliyah, among the letters which uh, were written, Hazrat narrates many narrations over there. For example, if a person goes to the Qabristan and recites Surat Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad Allahu Samad Lam Yalid Walam Yulad Walam Yakul Lahu Kufuan Ahad 11 times and gives the sawab of that passage to those who are buried over there. Then, uh, uh, same words are over there that he will get nakis and hasanat equivalent to all those who are buried in that graveyard. He will get the sawab of reading Allah as well as special hasanat equivalent to all those buried in that graveyard. So when you go to the graveyard, read Yasin Sharif, read Allah Sharif 11 times, 12 times and give the sawab to those who are uh, buried over there. There is no harm in them. This pious servant of Allah was passing by this Qabristan. He might have been in a rush. So he stood there for a moment and he recited some Durush Sharif and maybe some Surah Fatiha or something and he passed on the Sawab to those who were buried over there. At night he sees, someone sees a dream and there are people coming out of their graves and going somewhere to get something. And he asked them, what is this? And said, some pious servant of Allah passed by and he oh. gave this Sawab. We are going there to get our share of that Sawab which is being distributed. Oh. So this is, uh, uh, dreams are an indication and they, you know, indicate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to give, uh, you know, give great importance to dreams. So there is some indication in there as well. So over here as well, many, any dreams of this type were seen with regards to giving sawab to the deceased after praying some Quran. So there is no harm in there. I mentioned the story of this, uh, Sheikh Abu Abdullah al-Yafi al-Yamani has a very nice book called Rawdul Riyahin. And he has mentioned many stories in there. He mentions regarding Shaykh Izzuddin ibn Abdul Salam rahmatullahi alayhi, who was a great Shafi'i scholar. And the Shafi'i's research was that you can pass on the thawab of a'mali maliyya, not a'mali badaniyya. Like you give 10 pounds sadaqah, and then you say, oh Allah, give this 10 pounds sawab to my father. Then the thawab will be delivered to him. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas's mother died in sleep. And he asked Rasulullah, if I, sallallahu alayhi wa if I do any sadqa on her behalf, will it reach her? And he says, of course, yes. So he gave one orchard, one bath, and he dug one well for his mother, 
and he freed one slave for his mother. Mm -hmm. That all this sawab goes to his mother. So if you do some good deed and take, uh, say to Allah that this sawab should be given to so and so person, there is no harm in there. Similarly over here, the Shafi'iyah used to say but the Mali ibadat sawab goes but not Badani ibadat. Hanafiyyah and Hanabila both say that no, their research is that uh, along with ibadate Maliyyah, ibadate Badaniya sawab can be passed on to someone as well. All you have to do is make the near. Oh Allah, this is a gift to so and so. So present it to him, and Allah will present it to that person. There is no harm in there. So Izzuddin ibn Abdi Salam passed away. Someone saw him in a dream and said, Hazrat, you are Shafi'i, and your research was that only Amale Maliya Sawab reaches the deceased. However, on behalf of you and for you, many Khatme Qurans were done over here. Did you receive them? And Izzuddin ibn Abdi Salam said, Bhai, dunya mein to hum kuch kehte the, yaha agar kuch aur hi dekha. My research was something while I was alive, but over here I found something else. Whatever sawab you sent, I got it. And it was delivered to me uh, by the malaika, the angels. I was once sitting with Sheikh Yunusad, my ustad, in Haram Sharif. And it was the time when King Fahad had passed away a few months before. So we were talking about, uh, you know, uh, King Fahad. And Hazrat asked me, Are bhai, you know, Shaf ahead ke liye kuch khatme Quran huye ke nahi? Were there any khatme Qurans done for Shaf ahead? And I said, Hazrat, maalum nahi. Ye sarafi jo hai, ye to mante nahi hai, Isa de sawab ko, aur kuch esa aya bhi nahi, kai akhbar mein ke bhai unke liye khatme Quran ho. Sirf ek photo dekha tha, ke ho koi Shaf ahead ki riyaz mein ek saada khabar hai, और उसके पास एक आदमी जो है वो बैठा हुआ है कुछ मिट्टी सीधी कर रहा है और दूसरा आदमी खड़ा है बाकी कोई पढ़ना वढ़ना ऐसा कुछ तो हमने सुना नहीं देखा नहीं इनका मसला कुछ और है वी हैव हर्ड एनीथिंग लाइक दैट सो हजरत सेड हाँ लेकिन भाई हमारे पाकिस्तान के जनरल जियाउल हक शहीद मरहूम का जब इंतकाल हुआ था तो उनकी तरफ से तीस हजार खत्म कुरान हुए थे that for General Ziaullah Shaheed Murhoon, 30,000 Khatme Qurans were done. So, uh, some Quran should have been done for King Fahad as well. Then Hazrat mentioned something else. That when this was uh, mentioned in the news, that 30,000 Khatme Qurans were done for General Ziaullah Shaheed Murhoon, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, someone said, Bhai, itne to humare Hazrat Shaykh Zakariya Rahmatullahi Alayhi ke liye bhi nahi huye honge that these many khatams might not have been done for our Shaykh Hazrat Zakariya Rahmatullahi Ali. So Hazrat Shaykh Yunus Sahib says, I said, Haan bhai, ek wakht mein to itne nahi huye honge, lekin murur e zaman apar is se zhada ho ke honge. Kyunki Hazrat ke khulafa, majazin, Hazrat ki taraf se pardhte rehte hain, to sab hi khatta kiya jaye, to is se kai guna zhada ho jaye ga. That maybe in one session or within a certain period, this much would not have been done, but over a few years, Hazrat Khulafa must have done more than that amount as well. So this khatm quran Quran Khani, reading Quran and asking Allah to give the sawab to the deceased is one of our beliefs and there is, it, is, it is supported through dalail and evidence from Quran and Hadith. This is another masala, we will discuss it somewhere. I just touched on it because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned in this hadith that if you pass by a graveyard, read Surah Yaseen, Allah will uh, relieve them from the azab throughout that day and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you sawab equivalent to those who are buried over there. You know, that is that hadith we read that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was passing by two graves and he inquired, who was greater than two sahabis and he said bring me two branches and he uh, what you call planted them on each grave and he said you know they, I saw them in azab one due to uh, not uh, protecting himself from the splashes of urine and uh, sometime urine splashes made him napak but he didn't clean himself properly and the other because of ghibat his tongue was not under control so I planted these two plants, maybe because of their, those plants, takhfif will be done upon them, they will be relieved for some time. The muhaddisin say this is because when the plant is alive, it's doing tasbih. So the tasbih of the plant is benefiting the sahib-e-qabr. 
So when a person stands near the Qabr and reads the Quran, why will the Quran not benefit him? Of course he will listen to your Quran and he will benefit from that. And this was the ma'mool and practice of our Aslaf. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said, When I die, bury me and stand in my, near my Qabr and read upon my Qabr from the beginning of Baqarah and from the ending of Surah Al-Baqarah. In one narration, read قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدْ أَنْ قُلْ بِفْلَا قُلْ بِبِالنَّاسِ and he says that, you know, this will benefit me while it is being recited uh, on the Qabr. So that is why from there our Mashaykh's Ma'mul is that they read Surah Al-Baqarah's beginning from Alif Lam Mim till Muflihun near the head of the deceased and from Amun Rasul till the end near the legs, feet, and then they make the Dua. So this is from Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu's Athar. So reading the Quran upon the deceased is allowed. Prophet ﷺ said over here, Iqra'u surat Yaseen ala mawtaakum. Read Yaseen upon your dead and uh, deceased ones. So there is no harm in there. So this is reading upon those deceased or uh, who is about to die. Abu Bakr al-Ajurri has narrated from Umm Darda radiyallahu anhu that the Prophet ﷺ said, Ma min mayyitin yuqra'u alayhi surat Yaseen illa hawwan Allahu alayhi. When a person is dying, Surah Yasin is being recited in front of him, Allah makes his death easy for him. Ibn Kasir rahmatullahi alayhi writes over here that because when Yasin is recited, Allah's mercy is attracted and barakat and rahmat is showered upon that area where Yasin is being recited and because of that, the uh, uh, ruh and soul's extraction is made easy for the person. Another hikmat and wisdom behind that is that when the person understands Arabic language and he understands Surah Yasin which is being recited in front of him with faint voice, then that means in Surah Yasin he will hear about uh, the people of Jannah. إِنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ الْيَوْمَ فِي شُغْلٍ فَاكِهُونَ هُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُهُمْ فِي غِلَالٍ عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ مُتَّكِئُونَ لَهُمْ فِيهَا فَاكِهَةٌ وَلَهُمْ مَا يَدَّعُونَ سَلَامٌ قَوْلًا مِّنْ رَبِّ الرَّحِيمِ When he hears these ayat, then he will feel like going to that jannah and taking that salam and greeting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this will make his soul extraction and taking out easy for him. This is why you should, we should recite Surah Yaseen near a person who is about to die. And uh, uh, this is written over here. Now, like Brother Shazad was saying, that if a person is ill, and people start reading Surah Yaseen, he immediately thinks, Why am I going? Why have people started Surah Yaseen? So, and don't think that every time Yasin is being recited, that means that the person is going now. It is just that it is a, maybe in a worst case scenario, maybe he is going to die and we read Surah Yasin, maybe he won't die. But that person should not think that I'm going now. No, many times a person recovers after that. I remember this person who had some severe illness and you know doctors had given him a little bit of time and some liver problem failure or something like that. And, uh, you know, people were rushing to the hospital to see him. He was a young man and he was the son of one of our elders. So I also went there. There was someone else sitting there, some ulamas as well. I sat in one corner. I started reciting Surah Yasin. And Alhamdulillah, in that sitting, you know, without talking to anyone, I just kept reciting, 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 reciting. And I recited 41 times. Within a short space of time. And Alhamdulillah, next day the young man recovers. Allah. And he is Allah. still alive. Allah. He's got a nice job as well and he's working <laughs> somewhere in Bolt. Surah Yasin, the barakat of Surah Yasin. Uh, Ibn Kasir rahmatullahi alayhi has said, Qala ba'adhu al-ulama, innaha la tuqra'u inda amrin asirin illa yassarahu Allah. Yasin is not recited upon some mushkil, some problematic uh, matter, but Allah eases that problem. So if you have any problem, read Surah Yaseen, Allah will ease that problem. Especially with regards to childbirth. Hazrat Mawlana Ashraf Ali Thanvi Ramatullah has written that 41 times recital is very beneficial for childbirth. If a lady is in her labor uh, pains and uh, uh, delivery is really difficult, then start reading Surah Yasin, inshallah Allah will make the delivery easy. And this also, I have experienced it myself. One of my children, they, that their birth, delivery was extremely difficult. So we went and came back, we went again, 
and the hospital kept him and sent me back home that you go, we will phone you. I came home and I went straight to the masjid. It was the summer time and uh, between Maghrib and Isha, I prayed Maghrib in masjid, sat in masjid uh, and st st kept on praying Surah Yasin until Isha time. 41 was not completed, so I completed the 41 after Isha. And uh, Alhamdulillah, during that night, after a while, the news came that the delivery has taken place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes delivery easy through the risk. And uh, uh, when we read it with conviction, yaqeen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, makes problems easy. I normally mention over here the story of Nasiruddin al-Busti, rahmatullahi He was an imam. He was a Mufassir Muhaddis. His story is that once his heartbeat stopped and people thought that he has passed away. So in those days they wouldn't take time. So just, just very quickly, you know, start because of the hot climate, they, they, they are very quick in this manner, matter. They give him ghusal, give him kafan and pray his janazah, khabar is ready. He's being lowered inside the grave. Covers in those days were also shallow. We have seen the covers in Madinah Munawwara. Now they bury him inside the grave and uh, they leave. Now he hadn't passed away, his heartbeat had stopped. But after he was placed in the cover, his heartbeat starts and he comes to his senses and he looks around and there is covers miti around him. But he was a very strong person. If normal person like you and me, he would have had heart failure. <laughs> and this happened to Badiyu Zaman Hamzani Rahmatullahi. Allama Badiyu Zaman Hamzani Rahmatullahi, the author of Muqamat e Badiyi. Similar scenario happened to him. People took him, buried him, and they were still putting, you know, start beginning to put soil on him. And they hear a huge scream. And where is the scream coming from? And they quickly take the mud out. And what do they see? That you know, Badiyu Zaman had not really passed away, he was still alive and what happened was he had taken his hand out of the kafan and he was holding on to his beard and he had a heart attack and he passed away due to the heart attack. No. But over here, Nasiruddin al-Busti thought to himself that we have heard that if you recite Surah Yasin 41 times, then Allah removes the problems. So he said, I need Allah now, so let me start reciting Surah Yasin. So in that Qabar, he starts reciting Surah Yaseen. Yaseen wal Quran al Hakim, in the Kalamir al Mursaleen, Allah Sirat al Mustaqim, Tanzir al Aziz al Rahim, Dunin al Qawm, Mamzir al Baum, Mughafinun. Now, how did Allah keep him alive? People will say there is no breathing, no air in there, whatever. Allah knows best. Maybe that in, in some areas the Qabars were, you know, like a room and only a little bit of soil on top. Otherwise, inside is not, you know, quite wide and they put one, two, three, four, many, uh, you know, bodies in there. Maybe something like that. Anyhow, he starts reading Surah Yasin. And suddenly, what does he hear? This, after he reads 10, 15, 20, 25 times, and he hears, you know, some spade D. And what had happened? This was a kafan chor. <laughs> a person had come to steal his kafan. Because in those, you know, days, times of gurbat and, uh, you know, poverty, people used to go some kafan chores and take the kafan away, the beautiful khubsurat chadras, bring it, wash it and then sell it again, get some money for it. They would leave the body naked inside the grave. Allah. So this kafan chore had come to take his kafan. So he kept on reciting Surat Yasin and slowly, slowly, he is finishing his 41 times and by that time the kafan chore has opened up the cover. And now when he tries to snatch the kafan, Nasiruddin Busti Ramdullah sits up. <laughs> and when he sits up, the kafan chor has heart attack and he passes away only. <laughs> and Nasiruddin Busti Ramdullah he gets up, he covers himself with that kafan, he comes home, he goes around, people's home knocking, but I am Nasiruddin Busti, I have not really died, you thought I was dead, only my heart beat and stopped, I am still alive. Don't be scared, I am not, it's nothing, no jinn boot or anything, I am really, that's a reality, in reality I am Nasiruddin. Busti Rahmatullahi. So he came, Allah gave him second life, and I read in the book called Kitabun Ki Darzga that uh, he, after that he wrote some tafsir of Quran as well. So Yasin Sharif can be read to solve problems. 
you just sit down and recite and recite and recite and recite and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to the barakat of Yaseen removes that problem these are some of the many benefits of Surah Yaseen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Yaseen wal Quranil Hakim innaka lamin al mursaleen ala siratin mustaqim تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون ياسين by the oath of the Quran which is powerful and full of wisdom surely you are from among our Rasuls and messengers you are upon Sirat Mustaqim the straight path and this Quran is a revelation of the mighty, the most merciful. So that it was revealed to you, so that you may warn a nation whose forefathers were not warned and who have been negligent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yaseen. What does Yaseen mean? Normally in Tafsir Jalalain, Allama Jalaluddin Suyuti Ramatullah says Allahu a'lamu bi muradihi bihi Allah knows fully well what he means by Yaseen and those huruf which are muqatta'at which are kya kate hain tukde tukde wale haraf separate haraf individual letters like alif lam meem alif lam meem saad Yaseen taaseen taaha hamim hamim ayn seen qaf kaf haya ayn saad these are individual letters, they are mentioned, ab uh, abbreviation, abbreviated letters, abbreviations, which are in the beginning of the surahs. Allah knows best what Allah means by them. Some Mufassirin have tried to mention some indication in there. Over here, for example, one of the, you know, possibilities, this is not a definite tafsir of the ayat, the definite of seal Allah knows. But possibilities are, number one, Allah could mean Ya Seed means Ya Sayyid. And Sayyid is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is Sayyidul Bashar. He is Sayyidul Awwaleen wal Akhirin. He is Sayyidul the Adam. So Allah is addressing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, instead of saying the long sentence Ya Sayyid al Bashar, Ya Sayyid al Mursaleen. Allah is saying in a abbreviated manner, Ya Seen. And then Allah is saying, Well, Quran in Hakim. Number two, some of us Sirin say, Ya Seen literally means Ya Insan. O oh man. And then O oh man can have two meanings. One is Allah is addressing the whole mankind. O oh human being, O oh mankind, I am addressing you and telling you the following message. And number two, it could have mean, Ya Insan means Al Insanul Kamil. And Al Insanul Kamil is Sayyiduna Muhammadul Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the complete human being. So, O Insan Kamil, I am addressing you and talking to you by the following words and Wal Quran Al Hakim. These are just possibilities. Some have also said that Yasin is Ismun min Asma'illahi Ta'ala, name from the names of Allah. But if that was the case, then we would not have been allowed to name someone with Yasin. But this name Yasin is allowed. So uh, it means that it's not from the names of Allah. Because Rahman, and you can't say name someone Rahman. So similarly, if Yasin was Allah's name, then you can't name a human being Yasin. So this means, this shows that it's not Allah's name. Some have said it is a name from the names of Sarkari Dualam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is, one of his names is Yasin, and another name is, is Taha. Nigahe, Ishqo, Mastime, Wahi Awwal, Wahi Akhir, Wahi Quran, Wahi Furqan, Wahi Yasin, Wahi Taha, like the poet says. So among these names are Yasin and Taha as well, as, just as some have said. Whatever Allah means, Allah, Allah knows fully well. Qazi Baizami Ramatullah has said that these abbreviations are an indication towards one mujiza of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that mujiza is that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was an ummi, unschooled, and he is bringing you this beautiful Qur'an, and this beautiful Qur'an is in the same alphabets, 
which you are using. The Arabic alphabets are 29 from Alif, Ba, Ta, Sa, Tir, Waw, Ha, Alif, Ya, Hamza, Ya. So these are the 29 alphabets by which you converse among yourself and talk and write and speak. So this Quran is with these alphabets, then come on, produce a similar Quran like this. And if you can't produce a Quran like this, even though it's in the same alphabets which you are using, you are using Alif, you are using Lam, Mim, Sawad, Ra, and Qaf, and Noon, and Ha, Mim, Ain, Sin, Qaf, Ya, Sin, Ta, Ha. These are the same letters which you use. So why, don't, why can't you produce a Quran like this? When you can't, then this means that this is a special Quran. This is not Muhammad's words. These are the words of Allah, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you not differentiate between these Quranic words and the words of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The words he himself speaks like إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّارِ الْمُسْلِمُ مَنْ سَلِمَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ مِنْ لِسَانِهِ وَيَدِهِ are totally different. And these words يَاسِينَ وَالْقُرْآنِ الْحَكِيمِ إِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ They are totally different. Can you not see the difference in there? So just look at these words and look at this kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take a lesson from there that this is not the work of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the direct words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So maybe it is this towards which Allah is indicating and Allah is saying Ya Seen Wal Quran al Hakim by the Quran which is full of Hikmat and wisdom. Hakim could have two meanings from Hikmat which means wisdom and Quran has lots and lots of wisdom in there. Hakimana Kalam Quran narrates the Hikmat Wala Kalam of Luqman Hakim alayhi salam Walaqad Ateena Luqman al Hikmata Anishkur Lilla Oman Yashkur Fainama Yashkur Lilafsihim. And Quran is full of hakimana words. Number two, sometimes ahkama yuhkimu yuhkaman means to make something strong and strengthen something. And uh, you know, uh, generate power into something. So this Quran is very powerful. Very powerful Quran. Yes. Very, very powerful Quran. Very, very powerful. We can't underestimate the power of the Quran. Like Dr. Amina Coxon, who is a new Muslimah, and she embraced Islam. And she says that, you know, uh, uh, I was a Catholic and uh, uh, I was restless because uh, I didn't understand everything fully well in Catholicism. So I started searching for other religions. I studied this and I studied that and I studied this. And until I came upon the Quran, somebody gave me a Quran and I studied, uh, you know, the Quran. And after reading the Quran, I embraced Islam. And she says, the example and similitude I can give here is that, let's say, there is a huge building, there are many rooms, and you go in that building, into the rooms, you open one room, you see some nice, nice little things in there, some candles, some little bit of light or something in there, another room and another room, you see this little bit of interesting things. And suddenly you go into a, a large, huge hall, and there is so much light there which which dazzles and which you know uh, which uh, which is dazzling and you, you have to cover your eyes and you cover your eyes in there and then slowly slowly you look from between your fingers and then you start grasping of whatever is inside so this is the example the other religion are like those other small rooms in which you get little little interesting things and this big room with that dazzling light is the room of the quran the Quran has so much power and so much nur in there that she said it, it takes me time to control myself and then observe the nur of the Quran. And then she says the power of Quran cannot be realized unless you have been deprived of it before. If you didn't have the Quran and then you get it, then you realize the power of the Quran. We are born Muslims, we read Quran all the time, we don't realize the power of the Quran. But those who did not have Islam and then they converted to Islam, they realized how powerful the Quran is. Allah is saying, well, Quran al Hakim, by Quran, which is very powerful, full of hikmat, wisdom, and full of power. I swear by the Quran, in Kalamin al Mursaleen, you are from the Anbiya and the Rusul and messengers whom I have sent. Mawlana Abdul, Hazrat Mawlana. Uh, Idris Khandalmi Rahmatullahi writes in Maadif quran that when we study the whole Qur'an, we don't see anywhere Allah taking qasam of any other messenger besides Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
He never said, Oh Ibrahim, I take custom that you are my messenger. Oh Adam, oh Nuh, oh Musa, oh Isa. But with regards to the Prophet he said, I take a custom of the Quran that you are my messenger. No. Can we doubt upon the oath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Never. Allah doesn't lie. Woman astaqu min Allahi qila, woman astaqu min Allahi haditha. Why does Allah have to lie? He doesn't need to lie. So whatever Allah speaks will be truth. And in his truth, if Allah takes a qasam, then the emphasis is, uh, you know, uh, 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 greater in, in there. And especially after that qasam, Allah is saying, innaka. And inna is also brought to emphasize, surely, verily, definitely. That Yasin, I take an oath by Quran, the powerful, surely and verily, definitely, you are from among my Rasuls and my messengers whom I have sent, and you are not a normal person. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and now Min al Mursaleen, who is a Rasul, wa Rasul insanun ba'athahu Allahu ila al khalqi li tabligh al ahkam. Rasul is a person whom Allah sends to the people to deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the definition of Rasul. And these Rasuls came from the time of Adam alayhi salam till Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kamu 124,000 uh, prophets came from among them, 313 messengers and Rasuls, the other the anbiya and prophets. This is the chain of the prophethood which was completed and finalized upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is saying, O Muhammad, you are from among my messengers and ala siratim mustaqim you are upon a straight path the other paths have gone crooked you know you are going on m6 or m1 and if you took an exit by mistake then you will just keep going going moving 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 and you will go somewhere where you won't realize this person was going from manchester to glasgow upon m6 and he went and he took wrong turning when he got to M6 and he kept on driving, driving and he made some mistake. Police stopped him and police asked him, where are you going? And he said, I'm going to Glasgow. And police said, this is Gloucester, not Glasgow. <laughs> so rather than going north, he was going south. Because he went crooked and he took the wrong turning, he went astray and far away. Allah is saying, the other people have taken some wrong turning and they have gone far away straight from the straight path. It is you, O Muhammad, who is upon the straight path. Who is upon that highway and that motorway which is leading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The others have gone away. So you are on ala sirat al mustaqim. Not only on ala sirat al mustaqim, you are inviting others towards the sirat al mustaqim as well. وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ صِرَاطِ اللَّهِ الَّذِي لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ أَلَا إِلَىٰ اللَّهِ تَصِيرُ الْأُمُورِ Surely you are guiding people towards Sirat al-Mustaqeem, the straight path, the path of Allah to whom belongs the kingdom of the heavens on the earth and whatever is in the heavens and the earth. And lo, to Allah returns the, uh, uh, the affair of all matters, uh, the all matters and affairs return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is ala sirat al you are upon Sirat al Mustaqim. Prophet is being given this good news of being on Sirat al Mustaqim. And we, because of our nature of disobedience and mis mistakes and shortcomings, we have to pray five times a day for this Sirat al Mustaqim. Every time we pray namaz, Eidin al Sirat al Mustaqim, Sirat al Ladina nam Talim, Ghaib al Mahubi al Imul al we need it, that's why we have to pray for it five times a day. The Prophet used to pray to teach us. He, Allah has given him the good news that Muhammad, you are on Sirat al-Mustaqim. But he is praying Surah Fatiha to teach you and me that we should always humble ourselves before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask him to keep us steadfast upon Sirat al-Mustaqim. Guide us along the Sirat al-Mustaqim so that we don't uh, waver here and there and take the wrong turning, wrong exit and end up somewhere else. So this is uh, ala Sirat al-Mustaqim that you are upon Sirat al-Mustaqim and on the straight path. Tanzeel al-Aziz al-Rahim and this Quran is a revelation of al-Aziz al-Rahim, the mighty, the powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is powerful, mighty and at the same time al-Rahim, he is most merciful, compassionate. Allah's attributes are mentioned over here. Allah is powerful, he can reveal the powerful Quran. He can reveal the Quran full of wisdom. And Allah is Rahim, merciful, he wants to show us mercy, that's why he is sending down this Quran. 
So this Quran is not to put some burden upon us and make things strict for us. No, it's to make e things easy for us. This Quran is a rahmat and is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and send this Quran down to show us his mercy. So this Quran is a revelation by Allah the powerful, Allah the most merciful. And Allah revealed this, لِتُنْذِرَ قَوْمًا مَا أُنْذِرَ آبَاؤُهُمْ فَهُمْ غَافِلُونَ So that you may warn a nation whose forefathers were not warned, therefore they are negligent and they are, they are not paying attention. قَوْمًا مَا أُنْذِرَ آبَاؤُهُمْ The indication is towards Quraysh. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Arabiyun nasl. So he was sent to the Arabs. And from there, the message was to be taken out uh, to the throughout the whole globe, because in other places, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Wama arsalna ka illa ka fatan linna si bashira wa nazira, walakinna akthar al-nas la yaglamun. Wama arsalna ka illa rahmatan lil alamin." So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent to the humans and the jinns, mankind and the jinns. And he was sent as Rahmatul Lil Alameen. He himself claimed, وَأُرْسِلْتُ إِلَى الْخَلْقِ كَافَّةً وَكَانَ النَّبِيُّ يُبْعَثُ إِلَى قَوْمِهِ خَاصَّةً The other prophets were sent to their uh, tribes especially, but I was sent to the whole humanity. So, uh, 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 over here, Allah is mentioning that he is, he is being born and bred and raised among the Arabs. Allah said, primarily, you have been sent to warn these and then your message will spread throughout the globe and it is for others as well. It's for Bilal Habshi as well who was from Habasha. It's for Suhaib Rumi as well who was from Rome. And it's for Abu Zal Ghifari as well who was from Ghifar. And it was from Miqdad Aswad as well who was from Kind. From the whole world, they all came and joined this, uh, 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 what you call, this uh, 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 followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, 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 th th this is what is meant over here. Inshallah, uh, this is the tafsir of uh, six ayat of Surah Yaseen from Laqal Haqqal Qawlu we will uh, read next week inshallah.